Hey guys and girls, Rajat here. So, if you are trying to get a job as a front-end developer or a full-stack developer, people or your employers would want you to know a pretty big deal about HTML and CSS. Then you will also be required to know a UI library like React.js or Angular.js or Vue.js in order to get that job. So, in the wake of such revolution where companies want you to know some sort of frameworks like React for front-end roles, there are certain areas in HTML and CSS which you can afford to not know in detail while still doing your job perfectly. So, if you learn a front-end framework or a library like React or Vue.js and you learn a significant deal about HTML and CSS, you will still be able to build marvelous experiences without diving way too deep into HTML and CSS knowledge base. Okay. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you what in my personal opinion is an absolute must you should know about HTML and CSS and what things are optional which you can have a cursory details about. Let's zoom into this list and go over this laundry list of items. So the very first topic is semantic HTML and it is all about those sections and articles tag. See, I believe that using React or Vue.js you can build proper component hierarchies. So learning the utility of these tags is completely optional. But in case you are building a web page which is going to be crawled by search engines and all or any sort of computerized program, these tags can be really useful. But if you are not building such an experience, these tags are completely optional, okay? Because humans cannot see these tags. These tags work for search engines and all or for computerized visitors. So these things are completely optional in case you know them, that is good. In case you do not know them, the end user is not going to notice a difference. Next topic is CSS preprocessor. Now here is a fun fact. I have never used any sort of CSS preprocessor in my production applications. I do have a knowledge about less and says and in great detail, but that is something I have acquired on the side just to, you know, tell the recruiters that I know this stuff. I actually know this stuff, but when it comes to writing CSS, I always fall back to writing vanilla CSS because I certainly do not like to introduce any sort of abstractions between the vanilla CSS and me because the more abstractions there are, the more counterintuitive the entire process of building any software product becomes. So. CSS preprocessors, in my personal opinion, are completely optional in case a company wants you to have a knowledge about any CSS preprocessor, be it SAS or less, you can acquire that knowledge within a span of a day or two. So you should not fret about not knowing CSS preprocessor. This topic is completely optional. Okay. Next, CSS specificity. Now, this thing is an absolute must which a developer should know in CSS because this is the collection of rules by which a browser decide what sort of styling it has to apply on an element. So as a front end developer or as a full stack developer, you really need to know whether the styles you are writing are going to be applied on your target element or not. So this specificity thing will tell you about hierarchies and all when it comes to cascading style sheets. So this topic is an absolute must. Next comes the resetting and normalizing CSS part. This topic is again a must. Every single full stack or front end developer needs to know about what resetting is, why we do resetting and how to reset things and what exactly needs to be resetted. Okay. Or reset. I do not know. Then comes the CSS architecture. Now, in the wake of knowing these frameworks like React and Vue, I think BEM is certainly a crucial topic to learn because there are going to be component hierarchies, your components are going to be nested and then you will be required to target those components in your cascading style sheets in order to style them. And a very great naming convention scheme you can follow in order to target those nested elements properly is this BEM 
strategy i have created a separate video about this bem thing and in case you are more curious about learning and diving deep into this bem thing you can check that video out so i think although it is an optional topic but you really need to know this bam strategy okay then the next thing is float again i think that after the advent of css flexbox there are certain things which have been made very simple and easy to do in today's css scenario but i think you really need to know a great deal about floats but most of the times you can you know get away by using some property like display inline or some property of flexbox in order to arrange your components properly so floats are something you should learn i would say although you would not be using floats that much in today's scenario but you should learn a great deal about floats because if you are going to end up working on a team with a lot of legacy code you are going to see a lot of floats in there because that is how we have been building various you know adventurous css layouts okay so floats is an essential topic you need to know then comes the flexbox and css grid this is an absolute must for any new css developer okay so flexbox is this sort of layout strategy you can say using which you can you know structure your components on any web page properly flexbox has chiseled out quite a lot of complexities that were involved in organizing components over a web page so flexbox is an absolute must which one has to know okay then comes the svgs now pngs and jpgs have been the default formats for media right like images and all but svgs are quickly taking over so although this is an optional topic but you should learn what svgs are how they are used and why people are actually getting inclined towards using svgs in place of pngs and jpgs because svgs are generated by an algorithm right so they take way lesser space as compared to a png or a jpg image okay so that is the reason but you should really do your own excursions into why svgs okay then comes the media queries this is also an important and crucial topic to know about when it comes to writing css because a lot of all or i should be saying that almost all of the websites today are very responsive and you cannot create responsive experiences without knowing media queries so media queries are an absolute must then comes the css display property again must i'm not going to explain what display properties are because uh, you are going to encounter these display properties on chapter 1 or 2 of any css book then comes the css position property again flexbox is there to help you out with your positioning and all but css position property is something you really need to master even if you know flexbox then comes css frameworks like bootstrap and all and i think these are completely optional you should not fret about bootstrap and all if you want to use bootstrap this uh, framework is really easy to pick up and learn and use so if you are an absolute beginner you should not just care about this bootstrap thing or any other css framework just to be clear okay then comes the css animation part although it is you know good to know a little bit of what animations are what easing is and what kind of animation properties are there css animation is i think completely optional but in case you know it it is well good to know but you can always pick up this css animations when there is a requirement but in case you are appearing for a job which wants you to create animated experiences then this topic can become a must have but quite a lot of jobs out there do not require you to animate stuff on the front end okay and even though you want to include a little bit of animation these animations are not really that hard to pick up learn and then implement and i would say that most of these professional web pages do not use 
that many animations in them okay so css animation is an optional topic you can learn it in your free time and you should not fret about not knowing css animation then comes the pseudo classes again an optional topic because you can actually target your nested elements using this BEM strategy and then again you can structure your component using your UI library like react or Vue.js. so completely optional topic studio classes I learned studio classes maybe uh, three or four years back and I thought it was an important topic but after learning react after moving on to react I have completely stopped using this pseudo classes okay so in my opinion in 2019 this topic is actually optional because I no more use pseudo classes for anything relevant or significant then comes the sprites part I personally have never used this sprites thing and I would not be a right person to talk about it and by the gist of it you might have got an idea that this topic is yet again optional if you no spriting then it is good if you do not know it not many companies are going to ask you about what css sprites are unless you are going to appear for a job which wants you to create or animate something on the canvas itself because in that case all of these sprites and css animations and all can become really essential okay so that was everything i wanted to talk about how much html and css one should know and I think I was able to address this topic to the best of my knowledge. In case you have more doubts about this subject, be sure to leave a comment on this video. In case you like this video and you want to see more such stuff on this channel, you should first of all subscribe to this channel so that you can get to know as soon as I upload something and like this video and this liking and subscribing can be a very good indicator that people are actually liking such content and I should be preparing more of such content. With this, this is Agarajas Saxena signing off. Take care. Bye-bye and I'll see you around.